All right. Hey, everybody. You're here at the Chaos Weekly Community Call. It is Tuesday, April 23rd. We are back from our little break. So I hope everybody had a good break. OSSNA was quite fun and quite exhausting. So yeah, we'll, we'll get it. See, see, we had a meeting break, but uh, some of us that were OSSNA, maybe not so much a break. Right, we need a break after the break. <laughs> yeah, so we need a vacation, vacation for my vacation. Yeah. Keep the yeah. Seinfeld things going, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's all Seinfeld a, references. I got a bed under my desk here. Yes. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, that's a th okay. It's a third one. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let me find. No, this is what I want. That should work. Okay. Let me open chat here. Move it out of the way. Yeah. I hope everyone is um, doing well. Um, this is, again, the Chaos Weekly Community Call. So we are here, same time, same place, every Tuesday. Um, this is part of the Chaos Code of Conduct, so keep that in mind as you interact with us. Um, we have um, chat that over to the side or wherever that you are welcome to interact with us. If you don't want to uh, turn your cameras on or turn your mic on, happy to just do the chat. That's totally fine. We'll try to keep track of that. And if anybody needs the minutes, um, feel free to drop them or, or ask and somebody will drop them in chat. So there you go. I um, love this question. This was from Dawn. Thank you very much. Um, that is hilarious. The someone's cat kept taking over the camera. That's the best kind of meaning. It was really funny because the cat was just like this and she, she was doing, you know, one of these, <laughs> trying to see around it. It was very funny. Amazing. amazing. It's adorable. And Eddie Inca is making some self uh, self improvements, <laughs> which is good. My dog Lucy is cancer free. She's also really crazy because she wants to go outside, but get in your bed. Come on, get in your bed. She does not want to get in her bed. Okay. Um, <laughs> Sean apparently missed the garbage this morning. It's all right. It'll come back. And then Matt has a few things. Armstrong still thinking about it. So if you have something that makes you happy or made you smile today, mine was actually yesterday, um, drop it in here. We'd love to hear about it. Um, okay, so let's jump into this. Uh, who was there that would like to talk about some of the things that they learned, insights, thoughts around that conference? I would say the, oh, go ahead, Sean. Oh, you can go. I just put my hand up figuring a crowd. You would go first. Okay. ChaosCon was really nice. We did these breakout sessions and I think they went better than expected. So we have maybe five metric models that actually got pretty well developed Four, I kind of forget how many we wrote, four, five. Um, but it certainly gives us things to talk about this coming Thursday. So that was really nice. I thought it was a big success. Um, and really, I don't, we didn't spend a tremendous amount of time typing, maybe 30 minutes in our breakout sessions, 40 minutes, but a lot of reporting back and a lot of good conversation. Um, we had, I don't know, maybe 45 people attend, attend out of the 70. Um, I'm starting to think that people might just register with no intention of coming, but want to support chaos in the $10 <laughs> ways that they can, but that's okay. So I'm like, maybe we should up the, <laughs> the fee so people... <laughs> Uh, it was just a thought, because um, you look at the list, I mean, it's a really impressive group of people who were there, and I'm pretty sure a number of people just didn't have four hours if I looked at the list of people that come to ChaosCon for, for that amount of time. So it was, it was really great. I thought it was a really great group of people. So I'll, I'll stop there just on and it felt like it felt like maybe there were more than that, because there were people kind of dropping in and out as they had time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know Elizabeth tried to to check everybody off and count everybody, but I know I know some people slipped by. Yeah, I think mine was right before we did the sessions. I was trying to gauge like a really rough count of how many we would how many would be in each group. So that's that was my forty five. But you're right. I think a bunch of people came in during that time. I think there was one group that had <laughs> a couple drop in folks. Mm -hmm. And I think. There, it, certainly, the room was so giant that the picture made me made you realize more clearly how many people were there, because in that giant room, it felt so sparse. But 
there were indeed a lot of people there. So it was great. I thought, the, I thought the social went really well too. I mean, I'm glad I'm glad we did that because I know we haven't always done a social, and it was it was actually it was super affordable. Like it wasn't crazy expensive, and there there are good ways to to do those kinds of those kinds of events. And so I think we should strive to do more of more of those. Yeah, okay. it was it was a lot less expensive in North America than Europe, but I think that's going to be the case always. The Europe one, we had fixed prices. Yeah, so it was, we were fixed going in, no matter how much we had to drink. Right, and this one was set up differently. I think Don had set it up fixed price for food, variable on the alcohol. Right. Yeah, and I think the difference, uh, a big part of the difference, is that we did it at a hotel in uh, Brussels and hotels are always going to be a lot more expensive. And in Seattle, we did it at a, at a pub, basically. Yeah, and I think it was, I think you're right, Sean. I think it was like half the price maybe when it came it was down. Less, to it was less than half, yeah. Okay. Like 45% of the total cost. Okay. And probably about the same number of people, to be honest with you. Yeah. For like sure. the one in Brussels, it was so tiny, like it felt more crowded, but the room was really tiny. In this, we had the whole second floor. Yeah, I was a little worried when we had 70 people registered because they told me that the upstairs would really only fit about 50 people. Um, so I was, I was a little bit, I was a little bit worried about what we might end up with, but it, it worked really well. Yeah, I agreed. So Sean, did you have a comment on ChaosCon? Oh, I, I uh, not on uh, ChaosCon necessarily. Uh, just because you covered that, I think the visualization workshop we had went really well. We had about thirty to thirty-five people there, pretty steadily. Again, with we also had people going in and out of that, and we also I was also pretty impressed that um, Remy and his team got a whole bunch of uh, like three uh, different. Um, what were they called? Uh, breakout sessions or unconference sessions where they talked about a lot of the things that they're doing. And I think some of the things they're doing with um, what they call the Nadia classifications for projects are pretty is pretty cool. And it was good to hear them talk about that a number of times. Yeah, so shout out, was... shout out to Remy's team. Yeah, for sure. I thought that was really good because that. Um, yeah, so they, they were kind of all over the place. I kept seeing them mm -hmm. in different different parts of the conference, you know, talking about different aspects of it. Um, but it's, it, you know, it's really interesting, like how they're automating the classification of, of projects in a way that, that I think is really useful from a metric standpoint. In fact, I was, I was, Emma was sitting behind me in the Remy session and I, I looked at her and said, you know, I wish, I wish I'd thought of this when I worked at VMware <laughs> because it would have helped solve some of the problems that I had around kind of, you know, not having, not having classifications for projects. I wish I'd thought of doing it in this way because it was a particularly nice way of doing things. So I, I encourage you once the once the uh, videos come out to have a um, you know have a look at that video for that that talk. And it was a joint talk between Remy's team and Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. One of them. One of the one of the ones they had was I. Um, I wish I'd thought of what they thought of seven and a half years ago or at any point in the last seven and a half years, because it's a, a pretty useful little mnemonic that helps you decide what where what kind of project is like it's just a very thoughtful classification system that Microsoft and Remy's team came up with. And it's automated in a way that made it really useful. Yeah. So you can get a, once they have the, they haven't got the Devon, I asked, this is my question in one of the sessions was, how do I do this? And they don't yet have the Dev instructions out. So that's one of their to do's. But once that to do is in play, I'm, I'm kind of keen to experiment with it on some of our repositories. Mm -hmm. That is all I had, Matt. For Open Source Summit in North America, I participated in a couple panels. Um, one on, um, one with Don and Gary and Emma, uh, really, really well attended, um, with some really nice questions. It was 40 minutes. So thanks for being there for that. But that went really, really well. 
I think I added a question at the end that nobody was expecting, but that's okay <laughs> based on the conversation. And then um, with Emilio and Enoch and Elizabeth, we also had another panel on uh, DEI project badging. That one was much shorter. I learned that um, the DEI track only had four slots, I think is how I understood it. And there was a, instead of four 40 minute slots, they made a request to turn it into eight 20 minute slots. And so we were one of the 20 minute slots. It went really fast, but it was nice to talk about project badging with a lot of folks. So that was, I thought that went really well too. And I will say, I um, seemed like I walked by a number of either presentations or saw on LinkedIn, just a lot of nice references to chaos in a variety of different places. Yeah, and I had an Ask the Experts, which was at almost at the very end of the conference. So it was like in one of the last slots. And I kind of expected it would be like me, Sean, and Gary just like hanging out. Um, but the table was full and people were pulling up chairs. And so it was um, it was really well attended at the end of the day. So I was I was impressed that the people wanted to hang out and talk talk to us about metrics. So I think that was that was a really good sign. Yes, I think Don's table did draw the largest crowd. Not that we're keeping score, but <laughs> out of the three tables that we have. Yeah. <laughs> hey, somebody's <laughs> got to get the gold. <laughs> and then I'll just add from a from a booth standpoint at uh, OSSNA, um, I do want to give a shout out to the twelve chaotix that volunteered to help staff the booth throughout the course of the conference that was amazing and actually gave me a chance to breathe so thank you very much and i'll call everybody out on slack um but it was great to see folks volunteering that um either only touch one piece of chaos or um are brand new to chaos uh you know just fantastic to to see their enthusiasm for chaos and the way that they, I was talking about this with Nicole, who I don't think is on the call today, um, but it was very interesting to see how people explain chaos in their own words <clears throat> and the different perspectives that we bring. Um, Rhea is, um, comes to our DEI meetings quite a bit and she is a compliance officer for um, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. So she uh, has a very different take on what she uses chaos for and what the value is. Um, as opposed to, to me, when I describe chaos, it's all about healthy and welcoming and blah, blah, huggy, you know, whatever. And, <laughs> and Rhea was like, no, this is a, a great way to indicate if there's um, a project that we need to look into further or that, you know, helps us assess our risk and all of these things. So it was just fascinating to see that. Um, I did talk to Nicole. I know one of our goals for the board was to create kind of this elevator pitch for chaos. Like here's chaos in a two sentence thing. Um, so Nicole was also listening in on everybody's kind of um, blurb that they would spew out when people would say, what is chaos? Um, so she and I um, may be working on kind of compiling all of those and putting it into the true elevator pitch. So that was great. Um, we had 95 people uh, enter for the Lego globe. So um, it, it, yeah, we were very happy that the person that we chose happened to materialize right at the moment that we chose them. So <laughs> congratulations to her and hopefully we'll get a picture. Uh, I, I need to reach out to her and just see if she'll take a picture for me um, so that we can just say, yes, we actually did give it away. It did not come home in my suitcase for my son. Like we actually did give it away to somebody else. <laughs> so well, um, I think they should take a picture with the constructed Lego though. True that, yeah, we that might be waiting be for there. a while. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Five years from now, we'll get a yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Um, but I thought it was great. Had some really good conversations. Um, a lot of people had heard of chaos in this tracks with pr prior conferences. In my experience, they've heard of chaos and don't know what we do, or they've never heard of chaos. But when we tell them, they're very excited and um, have really great positive feedback about what a great idea it is and how they're so happy someone's thinking about this sustainability. Blah blah blah. So. Um, that tracks. Um, nobody has ever said, well, that's a dumb idea for a project. <laughs> Never had anything like that. Um, everything is very kind. Everyone's very, very nice and kind. Um, so yeah, if you ever in the future are considering maybe staffing a booth, it's very easy because people are very um, receptive to what we have to say. So that's all I have to add, I think. 
I'm curious, since we were kind of pointing people to the, the Slack, do we have like a before after on the we, Slack yeah, sign up? I think or? we got maybe, I, I'll go run the numbers, but we did see a big influx. Like I get a notification when someone joins. Um, so we did have quite a lot. I want to say maybe like 15, 20 people in like the course of those few days, which nice. I think is a lot. Typically we get maybe uh, one to one to three people every single day. Like that is a trend that we have seen forever. It's like every mm -hmm. single day we add one, one or two, three, maybe three people. Um, so that was a nice little spike in the, in the numbers for, for keeping track of the metrics. Sean, you have a hand up. Uh, since I've paid the Slack bill uh, or submitted my expenses for the Slack bill yesterday, just as a reference for FOSDEM, we increased about 20% in total Slack active users after, after the FOSDEM chaos con, and we've retained uh, half of that consistently. So the way uh, Slack measures an active user is anyone who's been participating in the last 30 days. So we've, we've had a good success with FOSDEM and I would expect something similar with OSSNA where, you know, a bunch of people join and maybe about half of them, give or take, uh, stay active consistently for several months, at least afterwards. Yeah, that's really interesting, especially since the booth we had at, because um, it was FOSDEM and State of Open Con. Uh, you right. Were, like, right that's right. The, the um, QR code we had for the Slack at State of Open Con was, did not work. So, so that's even more amazing. <laughs> Had that many people joined, somehow magically found us and decided to join. So, so yeah, we'll see how the numbers go for this. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we're trying. You know, we're trying. That's all I can say. That's going to be on my tombstone. Is she? She tried. Yeah. Oh, and go, keep mind going up twenty percent. That's going up twenty percent on over a thousand active users, and really close to two thousand in many months. So. Um, those percentages are not, those are not trivial like ends if you're yeah, counting that's heads. Awesome. That's awesome. We did push over number 2000. I did not get to see who number 2000 was that joined. I, I mean, I don't, I wanted to like celebrate them a little, but yeah, I don't know who they were. So celebrate in secret, I guess. Anything else anybody wants to add about this conference? Or chaos con. Uh, Elizabeth. Yeah. I think it's a good idea to report the forty-five people out of seventy who registered. I'm just wondering if you could go further to see the uh, like a kind of follow up. What the because now we are talking about sixty-four percent of people that did attend might be the constraint or some other factors that might have caused them is something that uh, we could think about, we could just understand to see some hurdles, if it is something we can arrange or organize ahead of time to, to boost that number. Yeah, that's a really great question, Armstrong. Um, anecdotally, I had four people mention to me that they had full intentions of, of attending, but they had flight issues. There was some kind of protest at the airport in Seattle, I think happening on Monday, and I think it messed up flights and um, travel from the airport in on Monday afternoon. That's what I understand. I was already busy, so I don't know that firsthand, but that's what I heard from people. So it may have just been um, that. Um, I don't think that accounts for everybody that didn't come, um, but I think there might have been several more people in that um, bucket that fully intended to and just didn't, I <laughs> couldn't, <laughs> or came in late and I didn't get them checked off. Um, Cause I did try to mark, as they said, I did try to mark everybody, but um, you know, once it's going, I'm doing other things. So I'm just kind of like picking people out if make sure I, I, ca I captured that they, uh, they had registered or they had checked in with me. So I don't know, um, Armstrong, that's a great question. I wonder too, if, um, we could in the future also maybe make an announcement that if people had not gotten checked in like to come see me or some like just remind people that we we do just want to kind of keep track of who came um so maybe that that might be a problem if we didn't catch everybody we, those numbers might be um not as accurate as they could have been 
So that might be an idea for the future is just to keep kind of reminding people, hey, if you didn't get, if nobody checked you in, go see Elizabeth or go see whoever to make sure. Yeah, that, and as Matt says in chat, we are very consistently about 50 people for Chaos Con. Yeah, which is true. So it wasn't um, out of the ordinary to have around 45, 50 people, but it did seem like uh, a lot of people that, that didn't come that we would have expected to see just based on who they were. They were chaotic and, you know, people who were new chaos. So it wasn't like they, you know, freaked out and got scared or so. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why people wouldn't come, but Sean, you have your hand up. I, just, I talked with the Linux event staff about the registration fee and there were workshops that charged no registration fee and had between uh, two of them had between 200, 180 and 200 registrants and less than 30 showed up for each of those. So just in, you know, to why we charge, that's why we charge. Yeah, yeah. Does anybody have, have any other thoughts on, I mean, Armstrong, to your point too, we do have their registration information. So we could also, um, I was thinking about sending a follow-up survey to people who had attended, um, also including the people who didn't attend and maybe ask them, I don't know, I don't wanna to be too intrusive, but um, maybe word it in a way that's not so, that just like, hey, just curious, you know, what, if you didn't attend, was there a reason, is there something we could do better, that kind of thing. That yeah, way. it's it's usually helpful. I mean, it's useful for the community as well. Yeah, yeah, because there's definitely if it's something that's in our control and we can change, heck yeah, yeah, we can use that. So yeah, mm -hmm. great point. One follow up email for feedback is probably useful and not annoying. Yes, I would agree. I would agree. Okay, um, any other feedback in insights? Lessons learned. What do you all think about the giveaway? Do we think that that's worthwhile still? I, I do. I, I think it creates both a conversation piece for people who come, and I think people also come over to the table because they see the Lego. Yeah, I'd say Although, that's, yeah. Although if we can get placed next to the GitHub table every time, maybe we don't need it. <laughs> yeah, that was nice. <laughs> yeah. As people are waiting to talk to GitHub folks, then here we are. Here's chaos. Okay, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Was, we did get a couple of those, actually, but um, yeah. it was not that. But it did make it easier for people to find us, I think. Okay, we're just we're next to GitHub, so come find us. We don't want to lose that position. It's very privileged. <laughs> <laughs> We have literally no control over where we're put because we get a free boot, so they stick us wherever. But yeah. it was nice of them to put us right next to GitHub. That was lovely. It really was. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, everybody. I think we can probably move on. <laughs> we talked about OSS in quite a while. So let's go ahead and move on. Um, Soda Type, who wants to talk about this? That's me. So I'm just. I, Jeff from Sonotype had reached out to me. I had brought this up in the past that Sonotype in their yearly report would like to work with folks from Chaos just on the report and how to think through some of the things that we're seeing. Um, so I had put a call out for people who had an interest in doing this. Sean, I think you had an interest in participating in this. Don, I want to say you yeah. have an interest in participating in this. And I think yeah, Gabe, I've been on the calls with you, I think. Yeah, I'm just confirming because I'm just I'm yep. sending Jeff kind of a confirmation and then also Georg had expressed an interest in working on this. And so it's open. Um, there is a document. There's a legal document that needs to be signed. So Don, I do think you have that. It's just a it's like almost like a do you have that done. Yeah, I, I wasn't clear. Do we just need to sign it as individuals like yeah, um, so, personally yeah, just, agree not to. Yep, just sign it as individuals. Yep, and Sean, same for you. And I'll make sure uh, Georg has it. And personally, um, well, how about this? Is there anybody else on this call who would like to participate in that? It's this. There's a yearly state of open source report. I think that uh, so Matt, I have a question. So, uh -huh. what is it? Because I'm traveling in the summer, I'll not be in the meeting. So, I just wanted to know the logistic before I commit to this. 
I mm-hmm. would suspect that there are going to be some in-person meetings. In-person meeting? Yeah, I'm guessing with Jeff and the folks at Sonotype. Okay. Um, but I think it could be, I mean, if you wanted to participate, I think participating asynchronously would be good. Yeah, I'll be available to participate async, but I'll not be available in person in any way because uh, I'm traveling okay. for three months. I, you, I might not even attend chaos meetings for three months. Do you want to put your name down on this list? Yes. Okay, so then there's a form I'll have to send you, okay? Okay. And it'll have to be um, just sent to Jeff at Sonotype. I'll provide you the information. Okay. Yep. Do you want to collect those um, or do you want to send them just directly to Jeff? Mm, Probably a good idea to send them to me and then I'll do it just so it's not. That way we're not sending them to PCL. And and to your point always, I've been the one communicating with Jeff. And so if he's getting like, he's never met Vinod. And so if he gets it from Vinod, you you know, he might be like, what is this? So I sent him mine directly, but. Okay. I can send it to you as no, well. No, no, no. That's fine. If you if you have sent it in, don't sweat it, Sean. But he um, knows who I am at least. So yep. would anybody else like to participate? I've put this out a few times. Okay, well, if you do, don't hesitate to reach out to me and let me know. And again, there's just a small form I need you to sign. It's just about like you know, <laughs> working with a company, I think is basically what the form is <laughs> to make sure that you're going to do right by the the report. Um, and so I, that would be four people. Elizabeth, I I don't think that you were going to participate, but you can if you want. I'm not telling you not to, but uh can I say I will if you need me to, but yeah, I You can also just say no. Okay. Then, I, yeah, I would then it's just off your plate. <laughs> <laughs> I just have them already a lot. Uh, like my my plate is my bounty is yeah already piled yeah, up. No, that's that's so, completely yeah. fine. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was going to ask what the ask is. Like, sorry if I'm taking us back. Wait, what the ask is? It's like the time commitment, Ruth. Is that what you're thinking about? Yes. I think it could be variable. I think that's up to you. So kind of like to Vinod's point, you know, if there's periods of time where it's you're just. It's just not working for you. You could always step back. I think this is just really, I just need to know who would maybe be available to participate in the meetings and see the data as it's being produced. Because mm-hmm. it's, it's basically just like um, being part of a university research team. You know what I mean? Like who can see the data and is entrusted to do right by the data that is produced. So is it, yeah, I guess maybe that's a, that's a great question on Ruth, from Ruth is like, what, what exactly would you, what would constitute participation? Like what would be needed? If it's to help kind of go through the data, then I probably could, but if it's like. Then I think I, you would need to sign that form. Okay. Like if, if you wanna, I think honestly, if, you, if you're, you're either gonna be on like somebody who's not participating at all, just getting maybe updates you know, from this group here to, to this as they see fit, or you're willing to sit in some meetings, even if it's just one, you have access to the data, even if it's just to look at it, so. Yeah, I better not, but Ruth is adding her name, I see, so. Okay. Matt, do, Matt, yeah. do they need any help in analyzing their data, understanding some insight from it? So really, yeah, so the if you take a look at the Sonotype report, it's really about kind of understanding like security and, and open source. I can find the report here in a bit if you'd like. But um, so they're gonna have a, a lot of data that's collected. It, it, like last year, they used Grimoire Lab to collect a lot of the data and take a look at it. And so just trying to make sense of that is, is anyway, it... yeah, I can I can give in some input if it comes to analyzing the data and interpret some of the kind of things they do in data science or analytics. Okay. Yeah. Um, why don't you take a look at the report? I'll send you the form. Okay. And you yeah, can take sounds a look good. At the report and be like, no, that's not quite. Or you'd be okay. like, yeah, that sounds fun. So just let me know. Yeah. Okay. Um, from my perspective, Armstrong, if you add your name, that would be two, four, that'd be six people. I think that's plenty, to be honest with you. <laughs> Just in terms of like sonotype. 
you know. Um, and then I'm looking kind of at, well, I'll let you arrange how, how that works. So I'll send people on this list. Can you add Armstrong to this list, whoever's in the minutes? So Ruth, I'll send this to you, Benad, I'll send it to you, and I'll send it to Georg. Don, I know you already have it, or I believe you do, but okay. Okay, that's it. Thanks everybody on that issue. And then Matt, are you gonna segue right in here to this? Yeah, topic? so I just wanted to keep, um, just let people know that um, Ruth and a faculty member at Georgia State, Dequebi Maruping, and Sean are participating in a project with um, GitHub to take a look at, at how Copilot can have an impact on the lives of people in Africa. So we're really excited about this. Um, GitHub is, is going to be providing up to 250 licenses for Copilot over two years, which is really great. So I'm super happy about that. Um, we're going to be meeting the folks that I just mentioned. We're going to be meeting on Monday of next week to talk about the logistics. And so essentially what it is, is uh, Ruth and folks in, in Africa are going to be running, say, five workshops across Africa where people can be invited to learn about Copilot in the course of a day or a day and a half, however long the workshop is, just so they get a better understanding of what Copilot is and how to use it as a tool. And then during that workshop, asking people, you know, what are your hopes about using Copilot? How do you uh, anticipate that this is going to help you in your career or in your life? You know, so kind of ask those those baseline questions at that, that initial workshop. And then reconnect with folks over the course of the year, possibly as Sean had suggested diaries or doing re-interviews, whatever it might be, but reconnecting with people who had attended those workshops over the course of the year um, to just say, you know, you had these, these hopes in the initial workshop, how's that going for you? You know, you <laughs> hope that it would get, get you a job. <laughs> you know, are you feeling that it's having a positive impact in that regard? <coughs> Um, and we, I think we do that like kind of the follow-ups, maybe at six months and a year. I think this is to be determined on Monday as we kind of talk about the final structure and where the workshops might be and who might run the workshops and that kind of stuff. And I was thinking that the diary study method would be useful for some small subset of volunteers who participate in the workshops, mm -hmm. just to get that more granular understanding of how they're actually using it day to day yep. or if they're using it day to day. So really a lot of thanks to the folks at GitHub who are going to support this. Really, like, this couldn't have happened without, like we have the, the ability to kind of run the workshops and, you know, get people where they need to be throughout Africa. But the, the co-pilot license is 250 over two years is, is no small contribution. So thanks for GitHub or thanks to GitHub for that. So Matt, is this something that um, Chaos Africa folks can help with, or is it because it's kind of being run by Georgia State that it's like a little bit more like locked down on who? No, it's not being run by Georgia State. It's, oh, okay. No, it's no, just no. an interest from there, one there's a there. faculty member there, Dequebe Marubing, who's at Georgia State, who is okay. interested in helping kind of do this in a proper way where we get really nice data over the course of the year to understand how it's positive, having an impact in the lives of people. So if there are folks in Chaos Africa that would be able to like help run the workshops or help, yeah. is that something that is open for volunteers? Yep. So uh, Ruth and I had briefly talked about that. So let's say we ran five workshops across Africa. Like one option is to have Ruth fly everywhere <laughs> and do all the workshops. Uh, another option is to connect with folks locally in the, these different regions and have them run the workshops as well. So, yeah, we had um, just even some more context. Is last year we had done like a, a grant for people to pilot uh, where we had like a workshop in um, Chaos Town, Africa, in Labor. So, one of the um, contributors in Lagos here, she did the workshop. Um, and then we even did a short interview with some of the participants of the workshop before and after. So we had done something 
ni Willy Kumara. Um, it's just I've doing this one like over a period of one year, two years. So yes, the other idea of like having different people in different locations. Um, and we even had like different groups where I think Catherine, which is based in Kenya, he led like the whole development process or so something like that. Um, but the conference happened in Kenya, she would do that and get feedback do that. And Ruth, it might be we can talk about it on Monday too, but it might be worth talking to Samson with Oscar. Having 250 licenses is a lot. We could think a little bigger, that's all. Yeah, sure. Okay, so that was the update on that. Anybody have any questions for Matt or Ruth or Sean? All right. Um, we have space for other agenda items. If, you, if there's something that we need to chat about, we are happy to do so, we have time. Um, otherwise, we'll just jump right into the reminders. I'm guessing this was from Dawn. Yeah, we talked about it last time, so we don't need to talk about it again, but we're looking at renaming the bus factor. So we've got a poll open. If you haven't voted, it will be open until May 4th. I also dropped the other reminder in there just to remind people that if you're interested in speaking at the Open Source Summit EU in Vienna in September, the deadline for proposals is the 30th of this month, so next week. Awesome. Anybody have any other reminders or conferences, CFPs they've seen, other events? So quiet. All right. Okay. So I guess we don't have anything else to talk about. Right. Oh, here comes Ruth raising her hand at the last minute. Uh, she goes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so I think in the last meeting I had talked about the code for golf tech um, project. Yeah, so I think I kind of mixed up like they, they are looking for code related projects and it's really short timing, right? Because we had already like put together, I think I've been giving up with Matt um and Sean as well. We, we had already put together the education um project, right? Um but they are looking for more code project and need like two hundred and forty hours of commitment time. So since the program is already like start, it has already started like the mentoring obligations. Um, I I wanted to you know speak to them that we could participate in the next one and be more prepared because like right now it's just very short timing and getting together a mentor and all that stuff would be really short. So. Ruth, do you know is this um is this something they do once a year or do they do multiple? Yeah, they do once a year. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we can probably reach out next year. They can reach out to us, whichever is easiest. Thank you for looking into that, though. It's good to know that that's out there, for sure. Okay, that's all. Anybody else have updates, questions, something they want to chat about? We have eight minutes, but we do not have to use all eight minutes if we don't want to. All right, Matt says it's time for lunch. So I guess it's time for yeah, lunch. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> Me see too. You after maybe two and a half months. Yeah, Vinod, travel safe, my friend. Yeah, okay. be good. It was good to see you, Vinod. It was. Yeah. Uh, travels. Hope you get back in the country. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like a little send off. Oh, uh, <laughs> good luck. Just want to let you know we're all counting on you. <laughs> Poor Vinod. But, you know, Vinod, you'll just go with the flow. You know, you'll just figure it out. So. Yes. <laughs> all right, everybody. Bye bye. Have a great bye. rest of your day. Bye, everybody. Yeah.